Hey guys, this is Seb Sanford, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, and Happy Easter, wherever you're celebrating from wherever you are in the world. And as it's Easter Sunday, you're in for a special treat this Easter in quarantine. This is probably my second Easter in quarantine because we don't know how long the pandemic is going to last until all the vaccines are rolled out and we can all go back to our normal and happy lives again. But anyways, here's what's happening on this special video for Easter Sunday. It's time to go back in time to 1986, where an animated movie has been released and been in production for three years. Yep, it takes three years to make an animated movie like this one. And it's, and it's all in the hands of Mr. Don Bluth as the director, and it's the first animated movie to be produced and presented by Steven Spielberg himself. And this movie is called An American Tale. It's a story of a Russian mouse family who are immigrating from their hometown in Russia to start a new happy life, uh, a new and normal happy life in New York, in America, until their son, Fievel, got lost along the way. And this is one of my new favorite um, Finding Your Way Home type of movies. This is an American tale before Finding Nemo, before Finding Dory, before Lion, and almost any type of Finding Your Way Home type of film that you've ever seen. This, this, this is a movie that kids and their adults should watch in quarantine. So I managed to sit down with the cast, including Philip Glasso, the voice of Fifel in, in The American Tale 1 and 2. I also managed to talk to two other voice actors. Their names are Pat Music, who plays the voice of Tony, and Neil Ross, who was the voice of Honest John. Both of those voice actors were in the first movie, whilst Philip Glasso was in the first movie and the sequel titled Fifel Goes West. And by the time we reach uh, Thanksgiving uh, this year, that's an American Tales of the 35th birthday and the 30th anniversary of the sequel titled Fievel Goes West. So this is what happened during my virtual one-to-one -one chat with the cast of an American Tale and the sequel titled Fievel Goes West during a GalaxyCon virtual experience. Enjoy the video, and I'll see you on the outro. Hey, Phil Glasser. Hey, how are you, sir? How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. You want to get a take a picture together? Yes, please. All right, let's go. Ready? Three, two, one. You're good to go. Awesome. All right. How are you doing, Seb? I'm doing all right. And first off, I want to say happy 35th anniversary of an American Tale and 30th anniversary to the sequel Fievel Goes West. Awesome. And I got a couple questions for you regarding to those two movies. Okay. And first off, um, what was it like playing the voice of Fievel in both American Tale movies? It was a phenomenal uh, experience for me. You know, when I first started the first one, you know, I was five and a half years old when we started. And when we mm -hmm. did the second movie, you know, we, we did the same thing as I just got a little bit older. And we finished, I think, 1991 is when the second uh, film came out before everyone else. So just kind of learning and working with all these incredible people was pretty fantastic. Yep. I, I searched up all the years on IMDb. I'm all things movies. Yeah. No, nah, it's true. And here's, here's the second question. Uh -huh. If you could of your character Fievel in three words, which words would they be and why? Three words about Fievel. Um, being together forever would be the three words. Being together forever was the stuff that would be put on your heart by anyone anyone says or things that people would do. Those That's what sits on your heart and makes it able to be able to survive through all these people. I think that would probably do it. Wow, I couldn't agree more. Thank you, thank you very much. And third question, um, yep. do you have a favorite song from the first American Tale movie um, if so, which one is it? But if I, I don't blame you if you if you didn't do so well on the high note for Somewhere Out There. Well, Somewhere Out There for sure is going to be my favorite song. I remember the very first time I ever did it, the very first take is the one that made it in the movie because my voice cracked on the very first oh. take. And they used that in the movie because I was probably about six years old when we were recording it. Mm. You know, that was just such an incredible story about this little boy, uh, you know, just trying to figure everything out. And, you know, you have this story between him and his sister and it just, 
it was an absolute heartbreaker, but you know, and getting to work with Christopher uh, Plummer and doing Never Say Never, just me and him together, was awesome. Yeah, I was going to ask you on that, but um, I think you asked, you answered the question for me. Uh, um, and we do miss Christopher so much. Um, he sadly passed away two months ago. Yeah, it was it was a heartbreaker. Yeah, and and I have a final question for you. We'll sure. That. No um, problem. Hit me. It, it's about the sequel, Five All Goes West. Um, and how would you describe James Stewart's performance as Wiley Bob? As I know, this was his final movie years before his passing. It was it was something else. I knew who he was because I actually got to record with him when uh, when we were mm -hmm. recording together, and uh, I did get to meet him and work with him. And I knew who he was because of uh, you know the famous Christmas movie we grew up. Uh, yeah, it's a wonderful, wonderful. life, and. Uh, that was to me one of the most incredible thing people I've ever met in my life because I knew who he was and it was this older guy and he talked exactly the way he talked mm -hmm. and we have these moments and even though I was probably like 10 at the point I never felt so honored to be like I'm sitting with Jimmy Stewart this is crazy <laughs> so it's pretty awesome I wish I was there to see all of that yeah it was pretty awesome I was I was definitely spoiled yeah and uh, again, uh, happy 35th anniversary to An American Tale. And thank you so much for letting me spend the time to talk with you on the film. And awesome. stay safe and stay healthy. And may I dare say it, just like Christopher Plummer, never say never. Never say never, Seb. Keep following us on, on Instagram, and hopefully we'll see you at another uh, another thing real quick. Good to see you. Seb. Hey, Neil. Hi. Good to Hi. see you. Good to see you. Before we say anything, we have to pose for a picture. You ready? Be my pleasure. Big Great smile. big smile. Three, two, one. Perfect. You're good to go. Okay. What, what's well, on your mind? Well, first off, I want to say um, happy 35th anniversary to An American Tale. Thank you. On behalf of American Tale, I say thank you. Well, well that won't be until Thanksgiving this year, that is, because... Uh, because I checked it on IMDb. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I've got some questions on, regarding to the American Tale and your character, Honest John. Mm -hmm. First off, um, what was it like playing the voice of Honest John in the film? Well, it was very enjoyable. It's, uh, it was a character I could sink my teeth into, and um, he had some good lines. As I said in the panel, my only regret is that I didn't get to work uh, with Madeline Kahn. That would have been a real thrill, but uh, yeah, we did it separately and it came out okay. So, Yeah, and, and if you could describe Honest John in three words, uh, which words would they be and why? <laughs> uh, fat, drunk, and corrupt. Uh, <laughs> you could say. And I don't know why. I guess that's just the way he ended up. Well, I'll take that answer. And anyways, um, this this next question, it's regarding to Christopher Plummer, who was in the first film. Well, sadly, he can't be with us because he sadly passed away two months ago. And, and he was the voice of Henri, the French pigeon. Mm -hmm. um, how, how would you describe his performance as Henri, especially in the song sequence, Never Say Never? Well, he was wonderful. He was a, he was a, an, an enormously gifted actor. I actually saw him as a kid. I was raised in Canada. He's Canadian. Yeah. He and William Shatner and a few others, they were the big up-and-coming young guys. And then they all ran off to the United States of America and uh, had these wonderful careers. No, he was, he was a, a marvelous uh, guy, and he did a great job. Yeah, he would have been here to celebrate with us. With yeah. 35 years. Yeah. Anyways, here's the next question. And what was it like teaming up with Philip Glasser back when the movie itself was in production? Well, I don't recall that I ever met him. I, I worked uh, alone uh, with, with uh, the director, Don Bluth. And mm -hmm. I, I don't, I probably met uh, Philip at the, uh, at the, the various screenings, but I didn't work with any of the other cast members. Oh, yeah. If only I knew. If only I knew what would, what that was like. Well, you have to rely a tremendous amount on your imagination. 
Uh, Don Bluth would read Madeline Kahn's lines, and I had to imagine what they would sound like if she read them. Yeah. <laughs> Which was a, a little bit of a challenge. But as I said, it turned out fine, so no worries. Well, thank you, Neil. Anyways, um, again, happy 35th anniversary of the American Tale, and stay safe and healthy. I'll and, do my best. You do the same. And have you have yourself a happy Easter. I'll work on it. You too. Bye. Take care. Bye bye. Hey, hey Pat. Yeah, I can see you and hear you. Oh, nice. Wonderful. Do you mind if I interrupt really quick for a photo, guys? Go right ahead. Oh, one second. Sub disappeared for a second. Ah, oh, there he is. All right. All right, guys. There you guys are. So I'm going to count to three. Ready? Two and three. Perfect. Okay, Pat. Um, first off, I want to say, um, Happy 35th anniversary to An American Tale. But oh, that is until you. we reach Thanksgiving this year. And Excellent. I have a couple thank questions. Thank you. Yes. And thank you for being so patient. Uh, I had a little difficulty on my welcome. hand. Go right ahead. And what are your questions? Here, the first That's question. Um, what was it like playing the voice of Tony Taponi in the film? Um, it was incredible because uh, the audition I just did on my little cassette player, uh, they didn't, there, there were no, there was no copy, there were no lines. And so I based it on a little kid in my neighborhood, a little Italian boy in my neighborhood. And really? uh, yes, and the way he used to talk to me. And so I just kind of did him. And, uh, and Steven Spielberg not only liked it so much, he wanted to meet the kid. Um, but he, but it was me. So doing the kid, but, uh, mm. it was wonderful because it was my first animated film that I'd ever done. And, uh, Don Bluth is an amazing director. Plus what they do is they videotape you while you're recording. So they would use all of my, you know, movements, all my Tony, you know, all my Tony stuff. They got all that <laughs> stuff in there. You know? So wow. it was great. Yeah. That's amazing. What can I say? Spielberg, he's a great director and producer as well. Yes, he is. He's amazing. And here's uh, my second yeah. Go. Yeah. Here's my second question. Sure. And, and how would you describe the character of Tony in the movie? And how do you feel about the character himself? Um, I think Tony, you know, he was a hard he was a hard scrabble little guy, but he'd already gone through all the stuff that uh, that the immigrant kids went through uh, to hit the hit the streets and make his life better. Um, and so uh, I I would describe him as tough, but I would all just also describe him as having a huge heart, because uh, when he meets Fivel, he recognizes that Fivel is lost and terrified and in so much trouble. And the only thing he can think to do is kind of to, to take him in, you know what I mean? And to make yeah, a brother I, out of him, you know, and protect him. Uh, and that always, but he's he's also street smart. So he knows who to avoid. Yeah. He knows where the, where the stronger guys Almost are. Almost like all of the twists, like the scene. From oh my gosh, you took it right out of my mouth when we did the uh, thing. He's he's like the artful dodger. Absolutely. And all of her twists. Uh, yeah. Are you a Dickens fan yeah. too? You like Dickens? Because I love Dickens and I loved all of the um, Here's my next question. Sure. During, during the recording process of the film, how uh -huh. exactly did you go from your normal female voice to a male voice? And, and what, helps, <clears throat> what helps you to do this style of voice acting? Um, you think about if you're going to do a boy's voice, you kind of think about your chest, your chest being pecs. You think about kind of putting it in there. And making him a little tougher, you know? And then if he comes from the streets, he's going to have an accent too, right? And so <sighs> and you give him a little bit of a rasp because that makes him a little more boyish. But it all kind of comes from <clears throat> here, so, you know? I mean, hey, I love you. You're a great guy. You should taste my mother's spaghetti. It's incredible, you know? <laughs> you just kind of, wow. it's, it's up here, but it's also in your in your gut and in your in your pecs to be a boy and uh you kind of just take your tone and move it down women's voices can do kids voices uh fairly well uh just because of of the tone range the range of our voices you know does that does that help I definitely agree and, yeah. and here's my final question sure and, and what was it like um teaming up uh, what was it like teaming up with philip grasso 
uh, glass uh, um, during the production process of the film. Uh, it was it was amazing. Uh, the the he just was such a sweet kid. We didn't actually work together. We met later on, uh, uh, but uh, but his voice was so lovely and beautiful, and he's such a sweet sweet guy. Uh, Tony responded to that immediately, and these guys are so smart. Like I told you, they videotape you, so they get all of your emotions that they can then pack into the character when they draw the character. And it makes it it makes it live, you know. It just makes it live and makes it amazing. So, I, it's one of my specialist things that I've ever done in my whole life, and I'm so glad you love it too. So, thank, thank you. you. You're so and, welcome. And, yep. And again, happy 35th anniversary to an American Tale, and and always remember to never say never, just like the late Christopher Plummer. That's right. Never say never. That man was one of my favorite people on the planet. And it's it's bad that we lost him. But we have, we have all his work to look to, right? That makes it special for us to be able to. That's why this business is so great. Because we can yeah. always look up each other and remind ourselves what we did then and how it works and how great it is. And I appreciate you so much loving the film. I mean... Uh, <laughs> Show it to other people. Show it to younger kids because the whole immigration system is so difficult right now. This is a great way to indoctrinate kids as to how to welcome people when they come to this country and make them feel part of it, you know? Yeah. Thank you, Pat. And, you, and, I, hope, uh, and, yeah, and I hope you have a fantastic Easter Sunday. You too. And Are you going to do anything special? Well, I'm not so sure yet. I probably have a roast, and this is my second Easter in quarantine. Oh, I know. Join the club. Join the club. Yeah. I, we usually color eggs with my daughter, and I don't know if we're going to be able to do that, but uh, I've had my uh, shots. At least we've had our shots, so, you know, hopefully everything's yeah. going to get better soon. Um, I gave you a few That's extra true. seconds. If there's anything else you want to ask me, please do. And I, uh, all that's left to say now is that um, stay safe and stay healthy. And again, never say never. Never and, say never, Seb. Never say never. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this time with you. Take care, okay? You're welcome. All righty. Bye, Pat. Bye-bye. All right. And I think that wraps up the special Easter treat here for your Easter Sunday, uh, probably your second Easter in quarantine. And I highly recommend that you should have a go at watching An American Tale and An American Tale Fible Goes West. You should watch both of these movies at home with your family and friends. And if you like what you just seen, um, be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe today for new videos and turn on those notifications. And you can follow me on my socials, Twitter and Instagram. The links are in the description. And you can go on over to the website of galaxycon.com so you can check out um, the, the new updated schedule of what's to come virtually from the guys at GalaxyCon. Anyways, thanks for watching and have a fantastic Easter at home. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye. Thanks for watching.